welcome back. My name is Jane and I am with rubberstamps.com in collaboration with another Bob Ross themed stamp set. I'm really excited to be sharing with you our brand new set that will hopefully inspire your own inner Bob Ross in your crafting area. I know that I'm very eager to showcase what I have here. So with that said, let's get started and I'm gonna give you a really nice, easy, cute, and creative tutorial to send a little bit of color, a little bit of Bob, and a little bit of love to someone close to you. First, let's go over what I have in store. Here I have the official packaging for our Bob Ross collection. Now this is really simple, really easy, and fun to use clear stamps. Just adhere them to an acrylic block, fill them with ink, and get to stamping. Even though Bob Ross is a painter and he uses brush strokes and oil paints to create his masterpieces, here at rubberstamps.com, we are gonna be utilizing our partnership with Ranger. Ranger has a plethora of archival inks that I have so cleverly adhered to my paint palette here. I'm sticking with the classic colors of the rainbow to create a playful and easy craft for you. Some additional clear block stamps or I should say clear block plates for your stamps to go onto. So I have three different sizes here, but I think I should just be able to use small and medium, which are the two up front. In addition to my inks and my stamps, I have also utilized the Cricut Joy to cut out some almost stencils for my stamps to adhere to. So I have my paint palette, or I should say my paints, then my paint palette, speech bubble, paintbrush, and Mr. Bob Ross himself. So all of these elements I will be utilizing to create the front of my card. Before I get to stamping these elements, I want to um, stick them to my canvas here so that you, the viewer, can view what my plan is and how I'm going to create my card. So let's get into it. I have a tape glue runner. And I'm just going to put a little tape on. Not a lot because I want to be able to get my little elements off. Little paint palette. and then my brush. Now I'm ready to open up my stamps and get to stamping. So now that I have my stamps out, I have my teeny tiny acrylic block and I'm just going to get started. Always love that sound. And I think I'm gonna go with my paint palette first. Even though I have my rainbows, um, my rainbow colors on my paint palette, I didn't have room for my jet black. So I'm just going to use this right now and stamp away so that I can utilize the palette in the future. And I'm really just checking to make sure that all the ink is on the stamp. You can see just a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to line up as best I can. And push. I am working on an easel, so sometimes you just want to hold on and make sure things aren't totally moving crazy, especially with applying any pressure. I 
not bad. I'm going to be using a technique that directly utilizes the ink pad of the archival ink stamp. All you do, open it up. I have a nice fresh ink pad and if you're ever unsure of what it may look like, just give a little dab on the paper. And I'm just going to tip the pad up, I don't know, 45 degrees. And I'm going to actually create a wave pattern. And again, if you don't feel totally confident or comfortable, try it out on the side, get a scrap piece of paper, do it first, so then you know what to expect. So I'm just gonna angle my body over here and I'm just gonna do kind of like a gentle wave. It's nothing crazy, has really good texture, very reminiscent of a paintbrush. And I think the overall effect is pretty nice. Just gonna keep going. Here I have orange, specifically bright tangelo, and I'm gonna do the same motion again, but I'm gonna overlap just a little bit. and just keep going. Some things fell off on the side, so. And now I'm dropping the, <laughs> the ink itself. Now I'm moving on to chrome yellow. I'm really liking that. You could also try different ways. Just because I'm doing it one way doesn't mean that you would. So if you are using the inks, try them diagonally. Try them horizontally, vertically, whatever you think. I'm gonna keep going. And I'm moving on to emerald green. I am kind of getting to the end of my rope here, but I'm okay with that because, again, I'm going with the flow, I'm trying new things, and now I know something for next time. If I want to do even broader strokes, maybe I need bigger paper. If I want something a bit more fine, maybe I adjust and I only use the corner of the ink pad. It's all a learning experience. Now I have manganese blue, and that is going to wrap up my rainbow. That's actually quite nice. Quite lovely indeed. I think that would be a total appropriate technique to use for scrapbooking, card making, um, even bullet journaling. Things that you could easily paint an entire area of um, in a quick and easy way. So I want Bob to be down in the corner with the speech bubble kind of coming up from his direction. But the cool thing about this bubble is I could even have it going the other direction. I could have it slightly overlapping. Again, this is your world and your creation and just because I do it one way doesn't mean that you have to. Before I really start placing all of my elements, I wanna add just a little bit of color. The white and black is a nice contrast, but it just needs a little life to it. What I have here is just a large pack of Crayola colored pencils. Crayola is affordable and easy to find, but if you have a higher quality or more artist grade level colored pencil, those would also work really good. But here, we're just doing our best and we're just seeing where this journey takes us. Again, I'm just testing my colors, just finding some light peachy colors. And with colored pencil, it's really important to work light to dark. You can kind of set these aside. And I'm gonna hit it. I believe this is peach. And I'm just gonna hit his skin I'm not pushing crazy hard into the paper. And I'm holding the colored pencil 
in a sideways grip. Um, another way, this, if you hold the pencil really up close, almost like you're pinching something, this is called an artist grip. And the artist grip allows you to really have a lot of control and stability. So an artist grip is primarily used for graphite, colored pencils, anything that you have to have really up close and personal touch with. I'm avoiding the eyes and any of the teeth just because I don't want it to look messy. I'm gonna take my darker color, which is tan. And I'm just going to kind of follow the shape of the face. If you are someone who is just kind of delving into the art world or specifically a more intense way of creating, shading is very hard. <laughs> I've been doing art for a long time and shading is, is difficult. But what I find is, what are the deepest parts of the face? The eye socket, under the lip, the neck, depending on how chiseled your cheekbones are or how forward your eyebrows are, anything that casts an immediate shadow. If you have a lot of hair in your face, beard, you just kind of want to emphasize those areas. I'm just going to add a little life to Bob's cheeks. If you really want to get technical, the human face has a variety of colors that you would never actually believe were there unless you were specifically focusing on recreating a realistic portrait. But yellow, purple, green, orange, A lot of very non-traditional skin colors you wouldn't think of, but our skin is made up of so many different hues. And our shirt too. It's almost kind of close, kind of close to mine. And I'm loosening up on the pencil grip just cause I have a bit more space not locked into teeny tiny little areas. Not bad. Just hitting that white so, so, so light. Not bad. I'm going to continue to pull some colors out to go in cohesion with my paint palette and my brushes. I'm going to leave the speech bubble blank because I will be stamping a phrase in directly and then coloring in those letters. Smarter, not harder. And all I'm really doing right now is just focusing on details. You know, what is what is a paintbrush made up of? All right, well, 
I have my bristles. Uh, you typically have a metal and or plastic sheath around the base and then either a natural or painted wood. And I'm just going down the line and adding those colors where I think they would fit. Paint brushes come in all different shapes and sizes and colors, so mine look a bit more natural, but perhaps in your creation they're a bit more spunky. Just going to take um, a light turquoise and just add a little color to this jar. All right, so I'm just about ready to wrap up my card creation. All I'm gonna do now is focus on adhering all of my elements onto the face. I've used my colored pencils and I have stamped your masterpiece onto my speech bubble. I'm gonna put it off to the angle a little bit and I'm just gonna go in with my tape glue runner. I'm just gonna kinda hit around the edges even a little on the little uh, tail of the speech bubble, just so that's not kind of flapping and causing a scene. I'm gonna go right there. Now to add a little bit of more oomph in depth, I do have some foam feet. Um, I've always called them foam feet. I don't know if they're actually called foam feet um, in a professional sense, but they are little pads that just pop up off the paper. Now I'm just going to flip Bob over and prop him up with my foam feet. Make sure he doesn't fall. That would be terrible. And I'm gonna stick two of these large foam feet on. I'm gonna peel these off. Bob looks like there's a little bit of empty space next to him, so I'm gonna take my jar of paintbrushes and I'm gonna kinda tuck it behind his shoulder. So I'm just gonna take my tape glue, kinda tuck that in there, and I'm just gonna add a little A little color. I am going to stick with the rainbow. If you're like, you know, that's enough rainbows. You don't have to. You could make them pink. You could make them blue. If you were feeling really spunky, you could also use in tandem the Cricut cutouts to make the quote pop up. I've blended my inks. I've used my cutouts. I've stamped not only Mr. Bob, but some additional accessories, and I've colored everything in with colored pencil. The last thing I like to do is add some little embellishments using gems, pearls, sequins, whatever it may be, just to add a little bit of pop. I am going to be using my X-Acto knife because getting these gems off the little plastic sheet can be difficult. So I think what I would like to do, I think I'm going to take my blue 
and I'm going to hit my jar, kind of green off on the side. Um, maybe that's pretty good. I do want to show you the final product though because with the washi tape and the ink bleed, it looks a little bit messy. So when I take the tape off, I'm going to be left with a really nice crisp line. So if you are someone who isn't really confident in straight edges or using a ruler, washi tape, scotch tape, whatever it may be, even artist painter, artist painter tape works really good. All right, I've taken the liberty of removing my card from my canvas and also displaying it here on my easel in tandem with the stamp set. And in my hand here, I have my rainbow color palette that I used in today's stamp making creation from Ranger. As always, we would love to see what you will create using our stamp sets. We're so excited to be partnering with Mr. Bob Ross himself and the foundation in order to spread the love and joy of painting. But in our case, stamping. I wanna emphasize that this card is perfect for a beginner or someone who is just starting to dabble in the creative world. I hope that Bob Ross is an inspiration to you and if you haven't checked out some of his own tutorials, please make sure to do so. We would also love to see what you will create next, so please hit us with a hashtag stamp with us. Again, that's hashtag stamp with us, so that we can be inspired by your Bob Ross creation. Thank you for joining us, and we wish you happy stamping. <laughs>